they can and face the same kind of abuses the Okies did in the 1930s and Latinos face today. Another is from the American, the United States Catholic Bishops Pastoral on the Economy, 1988. <coughs> they said, We've seen the faces of poverty in our midst. Homeless people roam city streets in tattered clothing. Thousands stand in line at soup kitchens. Millions of children are so poorly nourished that their physical and mental health development are seriously harmed. These are alarming signs and trends. No kidding. Not much has changed. But they go on and then begin to ask the really <coughs> hard questions. They are asking questions, they're raising questions that we've been raising, you've been raising, all of us have been raising. This is a, a really good set of questions. We must ask ourselves, they say, does our economic system place more emphasis on maximizing profits <coughs> than on meeting human right needs and fostering human dignity? Yeah. Does our economy distribute its benefits equitably? Or does it concentrate power and resources in the hands of the few? Does it promote excessive materialism and individualism? Yeah. Does it direct too many resources to military purposes? Yeah. The neat thing about what the working class songs and the messages from all have in common <coughs> is that not much has changed as far as economic liberty is concerned. However, we have made some good changes since the turn of the 19th century. For instance, we have changed the child labor laws. We won the eight hour workday the right to bargain contracts and to organize, unemployment benefits, social security, voting rights and civil rights acts, GI Bill of Rights, Medicaid, Medicare, affirmative action, education grants. These are all great gains. However, four things haven't changed. One, the concerted efforts of the political right and the 1% to erode and eliminate the rights and gains we've won through struggle, privation, and spilled blood. Two, <coughs> poor got poorer. Three, the rich got richer. And four, and the class struggle continues unabated. Not, 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 that has not changed. From the Occupy Wall Street, from their pre preamble, I'll read just a, a couple of sentences, and then some of their, almost like the Declaration of Independence, some of the abuses, and some of the, in Spanish we say quejas, and uh, here we say, um, an outcry against injustices. Here's what they have to say in part of their preamble. We come to you at a time when corporations, which, which place profit over people, self-interest over justice, and oppression over equality, run our, run our governments. We have peaceably assembled here, as is our right, to let these facts be known. They've listed 24. I'll only read about six of them, okay? One, they have perpetuated inequality and discrimination in the workplace based on age, the color of one's skin, sex, gender identity, and sexual orientation. They have continuously sought to strip employees of the right to negotiate for better pay and safer working conditions. They have held students hostage with tens of thousands of dollars of debt on education 
which is itself a human right. They have consistently outsourced labor and used that outsourcing as leverage to cut workers' health care and pay. They have influenced the courts to achieve the same rights as people with none of the culpability nor the responsibility. They have sold our privacy as a commodity. They determine economic policy despite the catastrophic failures their policies have produced and continue to produce. They have donated large sums of money to politicians who are responsible for regulating them. That's like putting the fox in charge of the chicken coop. So, they, there are a number of others and they end up by saying, exercise your right to peaceably assemble. Occupy public space. Create a process to address the problems we face. And this last one is very, very important. And it's what you are doing here today. Generate solutions accessible to everyone. Remember that? Generate solutions accessible to everyone. Then, since I've managed to hold you this long in captive, uh, let me uh, come to some kind of conclusion here. You know, I have told you nothing new, nothing that you already didn't know or, or knew. You already knew these things. You've talked about them. You've thought about them. I've, but I hope that what I've said serves as a reminder that it can be done. Our liberty, our economic liberty is possible. You've seen Tunisian and Egyptian peoples begin to gain political liberty, and the Yemenis and Syrians are working at it, but will they win economic liberty? It will certainly take solidarity with the rest of the world to accomplish it. And now in closing, Frederick Douglass from his book, Philosophy Born of Struggle, in 1857, said, let me give you a word of the philosophy of reform. The whole history of the progress of human liberty shows that all concessions yet made to her august claims have been born of struggle. This struggle may be a moral one, or it may be a physical one, but it must be a struggle. Power concedes nothing without demand. It never did, and it never will. And now as I truly end, we repeatedly spoke of organizing. And we have a saying that says there's a good word. What's the good word? And the good word is organize. Let me hear you wake up. <laughs> What's the good word? Organize. organize. One more time. What's a good word? Organize. organize. Again, lastly. What's a good word? Organize. organize. Always remember that it can be done. Si se puede. Si now, se puede. Si se puede. Come on. Si, si se, se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. Thank you very much. Woo.